Thank you, Mr. President. Let me begin by congratulating the delegation of Mozambique for a very successful presidency and also for organizing today's debate. I thank other briefers and speakers as well for their very useful insights. Several countries in Africa, particularly in the Sahel, Central Africa, and the Horn of Africa, continue to be conflict-ridden by factors that are driven by chronic political instability, ethnic divisions, and exploitation by terrorist and armed groups. There is also the role of external factors in fueling such conflicts, which continues to be a matter of deep concern. We thus all need to come together to support African efforts in silencing the guns by the end of this decade. Allow me to make six points in this regard. One, inclusive politics, well-established governance structures, and a decentralized administration are critical elements in the nation-building process, which could be long and complex processes, particularly for countries ravaged by colonial rule lasting centuries. It is important to recognize the primacy of national governments and authorities in identifying and driving priorities, strategies and activities for sustaining peace, development, and to avoid a relapse into conflict. Two, we need to acknowledge and accept African leadership and African-driven solutions to Africa's problems. This, I understand, was stated in as many words by the Honorable President of Mozambique yesterday at the United Nations. Trying an external one-size-fits-all solution is a sure-fire recipe for failure. Deeper understanding of conflicts in Africa that best responds to their local wisdom, as well as developing a sense of ownership, is a critical factor in resolving such conflicts and achieving lasting peace. Three, the Council needs to fully leverage the comparative advantage of Africa's regional and sub-regional organizations to resolve prolonged conflicts. Collaboration between the United Nations and the African Union and sub-regional organizations such as the ECOWAS, the ECAS, the SDAC and the IGAD have always yielded positive results. Four, terrorism. Terrorism needs to be contained given that this is the biggest security threat in Africa. It is important to strengthen the capacities of national, regional and sub-regional responses to terrorism in Africa through capacity building, training, equipment and sustainable financial support bilaterally as well as multilaterally. Initiatives such as AMISOM, the G5 Sahel Joint Force, the SAMIM and the Multinational Joint Task Force need more robust support from the Security Council and the international community. Five, peace-building efforts in Africa need to be strengthened. Major donors, particularly developed countries and the international financial institutions should ramp up their ODA commitments and eliminate barriers to concessional financing to the economies of Africa so that they can achieve development goals enshrined in the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and Agenda 2063. Six, for this Council's credibility, it is important that Africa is given permanent representation in its decision making. In every debate, in every debate on such issues pertaining to Africa in the United Nations Security Council, India, India has consistently called for ensuring that as Africa's aspirations as outlined in the Eslovenia Consensus and the CERT Declaration are honored. The Council needs to move way beyond mere lip service to Africa's core concerns. Mr. President, India has been supporting several countries of Africa through development partnerships, capacity building, including of security forces and institutions, scholarships, vocational training and knowledge sharing, providing preferred market access to African products, etc. India will continue to do its utmost to support our African brethren in their quest for sustainable peace and, as our External Affairs Minister, Dr. S. J. Shankar, had aptly put it, and I will quote him, in India, you will always find a friend willing to stand with you through thick and thin. Thank you.